The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. As Obi Wan Kenobi once said, "Hello there, and welcome to Four Center presents Data Bank Dive." I'm Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm Ken Napsock. So happy to be with all of you here. This is a show where we take a dive into the StarWars.com data bank. And of course, you know, take a little, uh, little walk through the Wikipedia path to pick an item, a character, a location, a vehicle, and just celebrate it, discuss it, and ask the question, how weird is it? How wondrous is it? Or how just, you know, fun it is to have in Star Wars. We did a season of this on The Companion, a great sci-fi app. If you want to go sign up and join The Companion and find our first season, it is there for you to do so. Joseph, we are going to, we're, we're, we're in Mando season, right? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where we're heading, yeah? Yeah, exactly. I was interested in talking about something from The Mandalorian and I was like, what's something that's that's interesting and weird? And then a uh, personal experience popped back into my head where I was at Galaxy's Edge with my uh, wife and her uh, mother and father. And I had been on the, if you want to know anything from Star Wars, I'll let you know. But if you don't, I'll also be quiet uh, for that entire trip. And I saw this item for sale at Galaxy's Edge and I got real excited and they had a real look of like, why are you excited about that white bucket? <laughs> mm-hmm. And I had to explain to them the entire history of what we're going to talk about today, the Camtono. So I'm very happy to discuss this and already had some practice with my in-laws. Hey, this is great. This is an important piece of Star Wars uh, lore and an item. This is big. I love it. And I was so excited to see that they were, uh, you could buy your own Camtono for like 30 bucks, uh, ridiculously affordable. Uh, but I understand from the outside of like, that's a white bucket with some space stuff on it. <laughs> $30? Why? Well, let's uh, let's discover if we think it is worth uh, that much for a replica. Here is what the StarWars.com databank has to say about the Camtono. Cylindrical in shape, but small enough to be tucked under the average humanoid's arm. <laughs> a Camtono case can be used to hold a variety of treasures, including ingots of Beskar steel or a wealth of rare spice. At a moment's notice, it's small enough to be snatched up for a hasty escape. <laughs> This whole entry is very factual, but uh, riffing on, of course, uh, the the dearly beloved uh, Wilro Hood, which I'm sure we'll end up talking about a plenty. Yes, yes, indeed, we 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 have to if we did this. Yes, absolutely, we we have to. So we, let's just get out of the way because uh, we want this this databank dive show to be like uh, somewhat accessible to to people who are not Star Wars obsessed uh, as mm-hmm. Star Wars obsessed as we are. So if somebody uh, approached you and said, I've heard this phrase on the internet, Wilro Hood, the running of the hoods. The hell is that? How would you explain it to a friend quickly? I would say, you know, that one little thing you get obsessed with and you think it's just yours and then you discover that, oh, everyone had that experience and what a wonderful thing. Let's celebrate it. <laughs> that is Will Rowe Hood, the running of the hoods and the ice cream maker of Destiny and Star Wars, which we are definitely going to talk about, like you said. Oh, that is a gr- that is a great uh, summary of the, the importance, uh, how Will Rowe Hood exists in our, our little Star Wars community. There is more on the Camtono and Will Rowe Hood on Wikipedia. Here's what they have to say. A Camtono was a kind of security container for storing valuables. Notable users of Camtonos included the client, Cobb Vanth, Wilro Hood, and the Pike Syndicate. A male human named Wilro Hood was seen transporting a Camtono under his arm at multiple points in his life. <laughs> <laughs> including when Baron Administrator Lando Calrissian told the people of Cloud City to evacuate due to the Imperial threat. Uh, <laughs> under the behind-the-scenes section on Wikipedia, it says this, Wilro Hood's Camtono prop was an unaltered ice cream maker. This was noticed by fans. And the character apparently fleeing Cloud City, clutching an ice cream machine, developed a humorous cult following. Uh, the word Camtono may possibly be a reference to a viral video where an infant girl tries to pronounce ice cream, but instead says Camtono. Uh, so there you go. You you described the heart of it. Wikipedia gave us the backstory of Wilro Hood. How do you feel about uh, this very clinical description of the joke of Wilro Hood? 
I, th- this is what I would want from the fine folks uh, at Wikipedia who contribute over there. This is just give me the facts, <laughs> man. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, uh, you know, to say we we become obsessed with it uh, is is uh, is. Uh, is uh, correct, but also doesn't even fully uh, tackle the whole picture there. Uh, it's uh, it's so fun to humor humorous cult following. It's, uh, <laughs> if you get trampled in that wood run, it's a dangerous cult following. Uh, <laughs> but also the description. I love this is what I love Wikipedia, but also Star Wars dot com uh, databank. I mean, snatch up for a hasty escape. We obviously know what that's referencing, and it's a fun mm-hmm. link and not. But I love this list of notable users. This is as if, like, you know, list who uses the IKEA Billy style bookcase. <laughs> you know, it's just scripture. Connects. Like, it's just a thing, and, and these are notable users of a thing you can get at the store. Bro. It, it also suggests that they used it particularly well. Like, there's some council of Camptoners, like, ooh, Cobb Vance technique when he runs with that. That yes. is some good Camptono use. Well done. I like, I like what was in there too, and the way you opened it. Style. <laughs> yeah the the humorous cult following uh I, I love it when something very organic and flowing like this became an in joke and there's a bunch of culture built up around it. it has a very analytical and uh way of speaking about it that is a humorous cult following very much like the way tech would indeed describe this have you seen the camtono viral video that wikipedia is referencing I, uh, no, I haven't. And I, I, you know, what's funny. I was like, oh, I need a, I need a for reference. I've heard, I've heard that. I've heard that fact. I don't know what uh, we're, we're talking about. I was going to do it. I ran out of time today because of a hectic morning. <laughs> I, I'm so disappointed by myself. I'm going to do it right after we're done recording. It, it is exactly what it says on the tin, exactly what it says mm. on the Camtono. Uh, I, I'm sure people who actually understand, you know, the, the science and the history of human language development, it, there's, you know, a normal explanation, but it really is a dad uh, just walking his very young daughter word by word saying, uh, I, I want, want ice cream camtono and that about 17 times every time the word ice cream is offered every other word perfect mm. every time the attempt to say ice cream is made it's camtono how do you uh, uh yeah <laughs> we'll talk about more more about that about the whole twisty history yeah. Yeah. of this thing uh so that's the basics of what we're talking about now we're going to get into the heart of it uh mm. i want to start here ken when did you first notice as a fan as a viewer of the empire strikes back that Will Rowe Hood uh, had an unaltered ice maker. When did that bit of Star Wars community come into your life? Um, it's a two. It's a two part answer. I noticed Will Rowe Hood almost immediately, and uh, <laughs> I didn't see Empire till a little bit later. I saw it in like eighty three, but I, I saw things out of order. I saw Empire after Jedi, um, but I always say it. It just meshed into one kind of memory for me. But I, I, I yeah, immediately saw that. Uh, referencing that guy, part of my childhood, did not care pick up on understand know that it was uh, a, a human uh, earthbound object that came a little bit later late 90s more social media emerging where that that shared unique journey could be explored by all of us of hey that thing is this i so i was always not confused but i was like oh i i don't know what it is it just looked like something he was carrying <laughs> <laughs> but I knew yeah. him right i knew him and i knew he had a figure and all that stuff and the legend grew i just didn't dive into it yeah, yeah. I think I, I think when it was first brought up to me or first heard it, you know, it was probably in conversation with other, you know, uh, friends at like a convention, uh, that convention mm-hmm. I mentioned uh, often that I have attended for a very long time in Minneapolis uh, called Convergence. It's probably brought up there and I was probably like, oh, yeah, the, the, the guy in the orange uh, jumpsuit. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know. He's like, what are you talking about? That's an ice cream maker. So mm-hmm. when I looked, I saw it. But but here's the thing for me, Ken, I never had an ice cream maker growing up. Uh, I don't know if they were expensive back in the eighties or whatever, but we didn't have, we didn't have a VHS until much later in life. We didn't have a microwave until much later in life. Uh, So I probably would have grown up thinking an ice cream maker. What am I a millionaire? Of course I don't have an ice cream maker. If he'd been carrying like an easy bake oven, I would have recognized that from commercials, you know, if he'd been Mm -hmm. carrying like a Dairy Queen cup with Dennis the Menace on it, that was my relationship with ice cream. So funny you mentioned that. Uh, So my family, we did have an ice cream maker at one point. And yes, the top of it looked like it was more, ours was more of like a crock pot kind of feeling. Mm. But the top was exactly what it looks like when he's running that kind of little pointy thing. And then the the thing that kind of spins and makes the ice cream. The problem, why didn't, uh, I hadn't 
thought about this until you mentioned it. It should have resonated and connected sooner in me. It didn't because we, I remember the day we tried it once and we all were like, well, that ain't ice cream. And the family never used it again. <laughs> so uh, unlike running with an ice cream maker, your family ran, ran away from the ice cream maker. Yeah, there's a famous local uh, ice cream uh, spot in my hometown called Bernardo's Ice Cream, now called Doc Bernstein's. And uh, it was like, you want to go to Bernardo's? Yeah, let's go to Bernardo's. <laughs> So what happened to it? Did your father just like drive down to the beach and throw it in the ocean? What happened to the ice cream maker? Actually, knowing my father, it's probably still in his uh, garage. They've moved three times since that house, but it, it's probably still there. So I think you already did a the best description of the ice cream maker we're going to manage of. It's got the spinny thing and the, the bob on the top. But how would you attempt to physically describe it if somebody's like, I, I still don't know what you're talking about? Yeah, it is a, a plastic case maybe might even be confused as a plastic trash can with a fancy possibly spinning but definitely a uh, 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 lock protected top uh generally i'm ser- searching now either all of them white or shades of white depending on how far they've traveled in the galaxy yeah and really standing out in in kitchens of the late 70s and 80s if it's if it's white you know if it wasn't green or orange mm-hmm. or plaid of some kind really standing out in a kitchen so yeah it has it definitely has uh 70s tupperware vibes <laughs> it's well in a 70s kitchen burp your tupperware kids and uh put your camp tono uh, down or high up on a shelf yeah burp your camp tono yeah i was trying to describe it and i started with a bucket of dreams and like okay fine that's <laughs> that's not wrong it's not wrong, <laughs> but it's a, a poetic description, a bucket of dreams if you're getting good ice cream out of it. And, and yeah. if you got, uh, you know, a Beskar in there or, uh, you know, Spice or whatever you got in there. Uh, but so then I was like, OK, I got to try try harder than a bucket of dreams. So I thought eh, it's like it's a it's a it's a white jug with a spinny top. And then I realized, I think for me, it's kind of got the vibe like uh, it works is a personal vault the way it's been created. But like if this was an added instrument like the modal notes added another Bith band member and they were just blowing into this. <laughs> I would believe it. Cause it kind of looks like, you know, a, 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 the space version of, of a folk band jug you blow into. I, yeah, I was just going to say it's a jug, ba- a jug instrument. Like, like you're a member of Mumford and son. Like this is exactly, <laughs> yeah, it's a great way to look at it. <laughs> that could have been the history of it. That could have been the story that got made up instead of this uh, container of like, did you know Willow Hood was in a band? <laughs> Did you open up for the Lumineers? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what is for you, we'll dive into more details, but what is for you the big picture magic of the Camtono? What it, what does it add to Star Wars, uh, both in, I guess, in the way it actually exists in the galaxy and the twisty real life history of it? Yeah, it's hard to separate those because my answer first is going to be like, the, the magic of it is it is this, it is a, a connective thread for all of us it's the power of the fandom it's the power of the silly little space uh, opera meaning so much to all of us to to where um you know one of the, maybe one of the, the nice things about our star wars generation we, we did some bad things i think in the 90s and early 2000s for the generations coming up behind us but i think one of the good things is uh obsessing over this so much to where freeze frame in the vhs tapes or the trading <laughs> cards uh there wasn't a will row hood figure till much 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 later and this just was passed down like legends around a campfire about the tale of the man running with, is that an ice cream maker? That's truly the magic. And, and, and when the celebrations pop up and celebrations, uh, you know, that popped up, uh, you know, was around the prequels when they first popped up, uh, you know, are much different than the celebrations are now. Uh, but the fact that from that emerges 400 people running around dressed as Will Rowe Hood. That's that's magical. That's just amazing. And, and and that's still the thing that goes on. You hear those tales at the conventions and that's why there's such a joy, you know, of a of a of a, a little girl dressed as Jen or so running around handing Death Star data plans to any Leia she finds <laughs> on the convention floor. That's the magic of it all. And this is one of the big ones. This is one of the absolute big ones there. Uh, so that's magic. The magic of it in the Star Wars world is that it is there's almost no magic to it. It's a case. And the fact that that was kind of revealed so late, <laughs> right? This It was always, a, a, you know, to my knowledge, legends or something. I apologize if I'm missing a moment, but it was always like, yeah, yeah, we, we don't know what that was. Uh, you know, R- Will Rowe was maybe running with an ice cream maker. Who knows? You got to eat on Bespin. But the fact that part of the fun of Favreau and team and everyone's celebrating it and all the characters you're mentioning as notable users have all been introduced in the last couple of years, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So I, I think that's part of the magic too, that the magic is, there's no magic. It's a carrying case. It's a secured storage uh, location. It's a travel and locker. Yeah, no, I, I really, really like uh, your analysis of how the two, the real world and the fantasy world of Star Wars, how they interact. Yeah, it, it is one of those how, how communities, you know, build in internal language and inside joke, but how it's such a great example of how sort of meaning builds on on meaning, right? Yeah. Um, I remember being at, celebration i don't remember if it was 2019 or or uh 2022 um the running of the hoods is so well established as hey everybody let's put on these orange jumpsuits and and run with ice cream makers as a thing that someone had dressed up as the camtono and was carrying a little doll of wilro hood right (laughs) and to be able to see that and understand the meaning and understand the evolution of language and then imagine explaining that to somebody who has absolutely no context. Yeah. It's just such a great uh, image of the way humor and meaning can build on, on every on itself. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So funny. So, I, yeah, I think the magic is kind of the layers. I think it is the weird, twisty history of it. You're right that, you know, that was something that people noticed because they watched this movie again and again. And I do think people watch the movies and the TV shows again and again. But I also still sometimes wonder, like, how many Wilro hoods are there in the background of, you know, Rise of Skywalker that we're maybe not catching because we don't necessarily watch it in that same way anymore. Uh, and again, not that people don't rewatch it, but it, 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 it was the rewatching of our generation was out of love and also <laughs> desperation because there's nothing else to watch. Yeah. There's not a new one to watch. Yeah. Now there's something you're saying there that makes me think of, of this kind of um, this, this phenomenon of, of, uh, you, it, Star Wars changes and how we watch and engage with engage with it changes. The fact that we, you and I reference a, a wonderful uh, wiki called Wikipedia is, is because a knowledge for this kind of thing. And hey, did you see that thing uh, becomes, you know, a, a big thing for us and it becomes part of Star Wars, becomes part of all of our fandoms. And it can lead to uh, Easter egg conversations and connective threads and stuff that maybe takes away from the art sometimes. But no, overall, it's just a celebration of it there and how that might not exist as much in Star Wars because it, it it's self-aware. Now you have some like Pablo Hidalgo and, and, and team putting together a book that's going to point that stuff out for you. Will Rowe Hood would have been a, a, a name probably different and, and the Cam Tono something different because they would have put, put a book out in 1980 about the insider guide to Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. And, and that's, you know, not saying that current generation don't have fun doing that kind of stuff because oh, there's absolutely a lot of weird unexplained things um but that's okay that's part of it uh saturday night live started out poking uh, hard at the institution of television and then it became an institution that's just what's going to happen and star wars is that and and so i know what you're saying about you know hey we had a freeze frame a, a creaky vcr to be like hey, am i seeing that <laughs> that guy have an ice cream machine yeah and the internet finds everything so so it is in some ways like yeah uh, it will be found. Uh, just watch the Mandalorian episode that used to have Jeans Guy. It will be found. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think uh, just to finish my thought, I think um, Star Wars often makes arguments, especially like the light side and the light side characters, Yoda at his best, that, you know, it, it can be okay to make mistakes and maybe in a sort of like a creative way, even mistakes can end up being a gift. And it's so of the spirit of that, that like, uh, exhausted, hardworking prop masters are like, I, I don't know, give him an ice cream maker. We're, we're out of time to glue anything on it. Just yeah. it, how could it matter, right? And then people love this movie so much that it matters and it becomes a joke. And then John Favreau, you know, grows up with that and goes like, I want to grab every fun little thing I love in Star Wars and 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 give it weight and meaning. Mm-hmm. And it's cool that can start out as, as a, a, a quote unquote mistake that people mm-hmm. caught. And then not only does it become canon, but it becomes canon in, in a kind of serious way. It's the Camtono has literal weight. I mean, it's a it's a powerful object. It's a tiny Brinks vault. That's what its story is. And every time it pops up, it's it is very important because only valuable stuff is in there. Beskar is in there. The heart of what makes a Mandalorian a Mandalorian. Uh, mm-hmm. The, the Silicax crystals that allowed Cobb Vanth to get the armor, like important things are in there so it goes from a joke that we caught to something that actually has weight and that's magical to me as well said on that i absolutely love that uh and 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 i was i'm looking up a photo of of, of 
Favreau holding a Camtona with glee in his eyes, right? I'm looking at the photo right now. Here it is. I'm clicking on it. And he's just like holding up the camera. And there's a crew member next to him just smiling at John like he's been waiting for this moment. And 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 to stop there to say it's just John with his action figures is, I think, missing the whole point. And, and you're touching on it. Yeah, this, this is this. But what can we do with this? What's the storytelling behind this? Uh, thing it could have been you know the client could have picked it up and been like would you like ice cream like you could have done that but mm -hmm. no they add weight to it and exactly what you're talking about i love that yeah it is the spirit that every weird little thing even like things that are kind of a joke could mean something that's the power of what an expansive galaxy star wars is yeah yeah all right we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna be back to dive into some more details about the cam tono back in a moment And we are back to continue diving into the Cam Tono. So we were just talking about how in the story of Star Wars, as introduced in the whole Mando verse, it is like a tiny little vault. We see mostly powerful people put very valuable things in the Cam Tono. What do you think makes this uh, tiny little bucket of dreams so secure? <laughs> I think it's just, it's got two factor uh, on uh, authentic, authentication. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't say the word because it drives me crazy every time I have to do it. Yet I need to do it. I can't go into my Instagram account now without checking an email on my other phone. Um, so I think that's what it is. I think you're seeing the button. I think I think when when the client opens it up, Doctor Pershing's in another room going, "Yes, give it permission." And 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 I think that's just security. Plus, I think they're very sturdy. Um, I, I think you could toss it and throw it. It could fall out of a ship, a speeder, a droid could kick it. I think even IG-11 couldn't squish it. I think that's why. I think it's the best in the brand. I think, I think, and I'm, I'm going to look up the definition here, but I think Cam Tono is the Kleenex of Star Wars, where it's probably, to me, <laughs> it's a brand name that just becomes what the item is. Kleenex is tissue, but you don't call it tissue, you call it Kleenex. Cam Tono, to me, is Cam Tono tough. You need to oh. I love that Cam Tono tough. That's great. And and I yeah, I agree with you that it that there's something more complicated when we're seeing that some buttons are pressed, it's twisted, it mm -hmm. it pops open dramatically. But yeah, I, I I want the extended scene where we get to hear the client actually say, please enter the Google authentication code. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh that would be great. Uh I really like uh, yeah, it's tough. You can run over it with anything right the, the falcon yeah. could land on it and it's not going to crack open um yeah. but in my head canon i think it also has defenses like a james bond car and we haven't seen them enacted yet like you know if you put in the wrong code it shocks you or poison darts fly out of it we haven't seen it you know we haven't mm -hmm. seen like a slicer try to get into it uh this is total head canon too but i also like the idea that if you're aware that it's been stolen and it's still in range and you're the owner of the cam tono you could send a code uh, to make it impossibly heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so like somebody's running away with it. You hit a few buttons and they just go down. It yeah. can't be lifted. Like Thor's hammer can't be lifted. Love that. Love that. <laughs> it's just like, you're like yeah. <laughs> whoop. Uh, so let's, let's talk again about Will Rowe Hood. We have to. Uh, he mm. is Mr. Camtono. Should uh, Will Rowe, Mr. Camtono Hood appear on the Mandalorian? And if so, with or without his Cam Tono? Thought about this. This could be one of those jokes that people make. Uh, you and I often reference, like, what are we going to get a gonk droid movie? And and you can make that. I think I, I, I probably have friends that made the, that joke. like And, and mm -hmm. made it technically or, or with a lot of snark. Uh, not those celebrating it. So I've thought about this. We're not, we're not proposing a Disney Plus series. We're not proposing a, Mary, a, a, a movie. We are proposing what needs to happen. Will Roe Hood needs to appear in The Mandalorian and he needs to have his Cam Tono. We just saw a book of Boba Fett. We saw Cami and Fixer show up mm -hmm. and it was, oh, you know, if you knew, you knew. If you didn't know, there's just some locals having some trouble with with the uh, gang, you know, and, and Boba Fett saves the day. That's all I would want out of it. I don't, I'd love to have him have a line. I'd love for him to be working with Grief Karga. I'd mm -hmm. love to, to like maybe grief's like, hey, I got a, I got a friend and hold on. Hey, Wilro, come up here. And 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 they open up a Cam Tono and give Amando whatever he needs. I would love it. I think it would be ju a just reward to the legend <laughs> of Wilro Hood for, for us even talking about the Cam Tono in 2023. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, a, a reward for for a job well done, Will Rowe, uh, well ran. Yeah, in uh, in Wikipedia, when it references that he's been seen running with one under his arm at multiple points in his life, he's popped up in a comic book in a in a video game. Mm. So why not give him his day in the sun? I almost think it would be fun to do kind of the same thing they did with the Camtona, where you know, hey, if you get it, you get it. If not, you're watching the show, and that's the safe where the best guy is, and there's nothing funny about the scene. It's very serious, right? Yeah. Um, it would almost be funny if if Wilro Hood is is in it, <laughs> and it's extremely weighty, and we never find out what what is in his Camtono, but it's got a, like a briefcase and Pulp Fiction vibe where mm. something serious is in there, and you don't want to mess with it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And you don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would like that. Mm. Uh, mm. If we have no Wilro Hood, but we do have continued use of the Camtono in the general Mandoverse, how would you like to see a Camtono used in season three of The Mandalorian? I is similar to what it's been done. I, I I'm trying to think. It's again, it's so normal. It's like I know I just want them to hold more things, but I think as as we're heading towards big things on Mandalore, um, I want maybe a Camtono to be found that is opened up and it's got like uh, things from Duchess Satine, like trinkets, maybe a message and that we honor and preserve the, me- the, the memory, the legacy of Duchess Satine. And it's been safe. It's like almost like a time capsule and like Bo-Katan finds it and they don't open it. And it's like helps them uh, go forward with the identity of uh, maybe a new Mandalore. Oh, big- wow. Like, like a speech that like young uh, Satine uh, gave during the Mandalorian uh, Civil War when she had to be on run, on the run, uh, protected by Qui Gon and Obi Wan. Yes, yes, mm. and and I'm telling, I'm okay with. There's also like a cardboard paper with like some hearts around a picture of young Obi Wan. I'm even fine with that. Like I'm fine with that. <laughs> it had some weight to it that it, it, it connects to what's going on in the show. Oh, that would be great. That would be great. I like that a lot. I uh, thought like, what else can be valuable? Because we've had you know things that are financially valuable, personally valuable, the Camtono, uh, the the spice, all, all these different things. Like. It would be pretty amazing if uh, Mando and Grogu intercepted an Imperial Camtono that is full of stolen kyber crystals. Yes. And then it can be like the, it w- I, I was thinking like, do, do, does, would, would Grogu make a lightsaber? It could be part of his journey of like, okay, well, now you have the crystal. What are you going to do with it? Uh, here's my uh, controversial suggestion. Pulling from uh, the High Republic novels in the character of Ernestra Rowe, I think Grogu can make a light whip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. From ice cream to light whips. That's what we're talking about today. Let's get back to ice cream. Uh, if in the reality of Star Wars, an ice cream maker is a portable safe, what do you think actual ice cream makers look like in Star Wars? They are so just normal looking. They are to me like you ever get like a personal blender that can also, if you make a protein drink in it, it you blend and drink from it. It's like <laughs> one of those kind of things. That's what I want. It, ice cream makers are just you want ice cream here. It's this cup. You press a button, you got it. And here you want a space spoon, take it. And and I think that's what it is. I think it is so. It's tiny. It's small. It's manageable. It's travel travel friendly. It, it, it's so you don't even like Baru probably had three of them in that background. We didn't see it. Right. Uh, she could probably make ice cream in the thing she was feeding the space veggies into as well. Yeah. yeah, indeed, yeah. I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. I also kind of like that technology in Star Wars n- doesn't necessarily track one to one, you know, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I've had so many uh, fun conversations and sometimes frustrating conversations uh, with friends who want Star Wars to make more sense. Right. It, it, the things that come up are like, well, if they have a droid that can do X, why don't they just have that droid do Y, you know? Yeah. Uh, so th- I embrace that sometimes Star Wars doesn't make super logical sense. I, I don't think our own world makes super logical sense sometimes. So I would like that in order to get ice cream, there's a specific droid for it, a sentient ice cream making droid, and it's massive. <laughs> it's like huge, yeah. like, uh, like Grumgar size, a uh, big, big hulking droid that you have to feed like uh, milk and cream and whatever else goes into space ice cream and that you know a, a bunch of doors open in the droid's torso and then you got a little cone of ice cream 
I love this, a moof milkshake. And I think this is a win. I, I like that maybe there's a little bit of, uh, you know, unfortunately uh, some some classism tied into it. So it's like Lita has it at home with mom, 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 and parent. And now part of the rebellion is to get ice cream makers out into the galaxy. <laughs> so people can experience the joy of that moof milkshake. Everybody deserves to have an ice cream droid. Yeah. And as they walk, they make the little ice cream truck sound. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there anything else in Star Wars that should be named off of a viral video from our planet Earth? And if so, which viral video? Uh, I, I struggle with this a little bit. I tried to find the right uh, viral videos. There's so many out there and sometimes I don't pay attention. So I went I went to two directions there. They're not necessarily um, items. I, I, I apologize, but but they're, they're vibes. And I think Mando's perfect for it. The first is um, because he is... There's a lot of healing that's going to be going on in um, Mandalorian season three. I, at least mm-hmm. I think we've talked about um, you going into the depths, you go into reclaim identity or heal from past traumas. So I think one way to show solidarity is uh, the Mando version of the ice bucket challenge to raise awareness. For other people. <laughs> but yeah, so, so when he's in those waters uh, on Mandalore, uh, you must uh, uh, take the container of chilled Mandalorian water and dump it upon your head. And and that that's the start of it. And that everyone else does it as, as a sign of uh, solidarity with uh, Din um, in this journey there. So that's my first thing. But then be, because of that, you get to know who you are. Maybe people, you feel the energy of people helping you and coming together around you. So then Mando is going to get on like a little speeder, um, not on like, say the hover skateboards from back to the future too. And he's just going to go, uh, he's going to go skating along drinking whatever the star Wars version of, of cranberry juice is while the star Wars version of Fleetwood Max dreams plays. And it's going to be that. <laughs> that is a really good one. That mm-hmm. is an, a really good one. Uh, I have an, an older meme, but I hope, uh, it, it still checks out according to Piet. Uh, I always like the double rainbow. I, I just like yes. the that it's it, it was both it's both beautiful and like yeah of course freak out and then also like but that is a little over the top. It's both at the same time. Um, so I would love it if uh, maybe it's in uh, the uh, Galactic Civil War, maybe it's in uh, the new era after the sequel film. But there's a a group of just nail rock hard tough uh, starfighter pilots uh, in X wing. A Y wing combined squadron called the Double Rainbows. <laughs> Double Rainbow all the way. Uh, rest, <laughs> in peace, rest in peace with that wonderful soul who, who was behind that video. Uh, that is beautiful. I love that. That's just, that's one of my favorites too. Yeah, and then they can arc across the sky, and then people can actually go. It's the Double Rainbows. They're going we, all the way. We there's one more. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't mention it. Just bought my head, and because someone would comment, we have a chance to do this as Grogu continues in his training and who he wants to be. Uh, he got the chain mail. He didn't get Yoda's lightsaber. But let's say he runs into the lights. It's, it's a dark saber. Maybe he's alone with a dark saber. Maybe he's alone with a lightsaber. He has a chance to be Star Wars kid. <laughs> and yeah. Finally give the full honor to Star Wars kid uh, for the hell he went through at one point for just being someone who loves Star Wars. We are all Star Wars kids. It's something you and I have said before. Grogu is Star Wars kid too. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. Uh, yeah. If the choreography matched up. Mm-hmm. Beautiful thing of beauty uh well we're already kind of making it personal but we always like to wrap up by trying to imagine we could interact in the real world with the thing from star wars we're talking about so ken uh if we did have cam tonos in the real world and they weren't ice cream makers but they were uh safes and i think probably more secure than the ones you can buy at galaxy's edge what would you keep in your cam tono I just started to go the direction of toys, Funko Pops. You know, I need to kind of find out what I'm going to do with those in my life. Um, sell them or display them. I don't know, but maybe that. But I started to go that direction. And I was like, no, I need to uh, something that's relevant to my life, something that is important to my life that I want to keep safe, but also keep myself from reaching for them constantly. I am obsessed with the uncrustable snacks from Smuckers. These are the <laughs> peanut butter jelly sandwiches. They even have meat options now, which is a little weird. Um, that you put in your freezer and then you thaw them out and you got a little protein pack of peanut butter and, and jelly and a whole lot of sugar. Uh, I love them to the point of it's a problem now. Um, so I buy the 15 packs, right? And I put them in the freezer and it's a good snack, often between four center recordings. Uh, so I need to put a bunch of them in a can tunnel. They would fit nicely. When you open it up, they kind of all fall out. And then because it's a hard, hard to get into them, I would eat them less <laughs> because I couldn't. <laughs> 
And then I just go around the galaxy with uh, their help. They're a little uh, helpful snack on the go. I would have a Camtona of Uncrustables. Uh, that That is great. It is something that is valuable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Close to your heart. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even think about that. It's like, could I put cheese in there and then it would last for years? It wouldn't go bad? Oh, man. Uh, you know, I thought about like, hey, what's something really close to my heart? And it is, mm -hmm. you know, my original Yoda action figure. Like, yeah, but I don't actually want him locked away. I want to, I want him on my desk where he is now. Uh, so then I thought like, what, what else is valid? I could, um, I could make a joke and say, put my feelings in there. Okay. But then I realized this is, this is what I would want to do. I would want to put like a little note in the Camtono. And then I wouldn't put anything else in it. And then someday, if somebody stole it, it would just be a little note shaming them <laughs> that says, I hope it was worth it. I hope this is everything you wanted it to be. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, here is the most controversial question. It's the final one. If you had to run with your Camtono in the real world, would you hold it by the handle or would you stick it under your arm in classic Wilro Hood fashion? Uh, I definitely hold it by the handle. Oh my God, I'd have to. I'd absolutely have to. I, I you know, I do lift weights, I do work out often, but I don't. I have thin uh, wrists that aren't as strong as I like them to be. I didn't get my dad's wrist, so I can't carry things as easily as I'd like. So uh, the underneath the arm, it's a good strategy. It's a good style. And I don't run fast anyways. I'm a cart puller, not a sprinter. So that, that'd be my style. I'd be doing the wheel row. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I think if something has a handle, I need to hold on to it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The handle for shopping bags was invented in Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, so I think I have, I don't know, some cultural need to hold on to a handle. Um, because it, it looks a little slippery to have under your arm. I know like, you know, that, that's like a football thing and all that. But I think my instinct would be if I'm running and I need to protect it, I would put one hand on the handle. I would hold the Camtona to my chest and then uh, wrap my other arm around it and try to hold it in every way it can be held. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like I'm writing a little romance song. Uh, I'm going to hold you every way you can be held, Camtono. <laughs> Love it. All right, we're going to move on to our final rating. We like to rate the wild, weird, wondrous factor. Our rating is based on one of the original Star Wars weirdos, Lobot. So out of 10 Lobot heads, one being the least, 10 being the most. Ken, how many Lobot heads do you give Camtono? I struggled with this one because I got to tell you what, at the end of the day, it might be a one because it's just something you have in Star Wars. But that ain't right and that ain't fair. Uh, wild and weird, but wondrous is the other thing we always talk about. And this has the just uh, uh, so much wonder, imagination, and love, uh, a little obsession behind it. I'm going to go six. I'm going to bump it up six. So that's, you know, it's so normal into one, but the love of it is wonderful and weird in its own way. So six out of 10. Yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm going to go a full 10 out of 10 because I'm going to give five weird and five wonder. Because I if it was just a joke, if it was just the ice cream maker and the mystery, that, that would be fun and it's weird. Uh, but you take the actual weird... Uh, real life history of it with them adding it into the star wars world in a way that is not at all jokey it's it's really serious when a camtono pops up it's serious business so those two combine the weird and the wonder uh, combine and make 10 out of 10 lobot heads for me that's a perfect answer so ken where can uh people find you Hey, if they want to find me, you can go to at Ken Napsock or my website kennapsock.com if you like music i got a show called pop rock and radio check it out and you can find all things Force Center by going to our Twitter feed. Probably the fastest way to find everything we do. It is at Force Center Pod. Check us out there. You can find all my stuff, all my social media, my YouTube channel uh, by searching Joseph Scrimshaw. But for now, I'm going to go wish I had a Camtono full of ice cream. That is it for Databank Dive.